Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation on Open Roads Best Practices Drawing Production. The first thing we want to point out about the Open Roads Designer Connect Edition and its drawing production is the fact that the left turn is not required anymore. For those of you that may be familiar with Open Roads uh, technology and SS4, to do uh, much of your drawing production, you had to make what we call a left turn. In other words, you had to go back into the legacy products to use the functionality and capabilities that were found there. Well, that is no more uh, true uh, with the Connect Edition. Uh, we have a full suite of functionalities and capabilities in our drawing production tools uh, to allow you to do whatever you need to do. So that's just the first thing we want to point out is no more left turn. Now, there are a couple of prerequisites that you need to be aware of before you can start cutting sheets, and we won't cover either one of those in this particular presentation. The first is setting up drawing seeds, and that is covered in a different presentation called Moving to Open Roads Designer, Setting Up Drawing Seeds. Uh, this has already been presented at the LEARN conference. If you were not able to attend it there, uh, the session is available on LEARN. I would strongly encourage you to, uh, to, go, to go listen to that and watch that so you'll understand the role of drawing seeds in the drawing production uh, process. Uh, don't forget, you can search for that using Connect Advisor, which should make it very easy to find. The second prerequisite, uh, along with setting up drawing seeds, is setting up annotation. Now, as we go through, we're going to cut some sheets. Uh, you'll notice your profiles are going to be annotated. The cross sections are going to be annotated. Obviously, that all has to be set up. And once again, that's not something we'll cover in this presentation. Uh, that is covered in a different presentation, moving to Open Roast Designer, setting up annotation. Uh, once again, I'd strongly encourage you to, to watch that. It is available on Learn so you're familiar with that process and how it works. And again, don't forget that can be searched for using Connect Advisor, which makes it very easy to find. Our agenda today is going to be twofold. The first thing we want to do is we want to look at a plan and profile sheet layout. Now, obviously, I understand there's all kind of different sheets we could cut. We could cut plan, plan, you know, plan only, double plan, triple plan if we wanted to. We could do uh, profile, profile, profile. We could do alternating plan profiles, all kind of different things. But obviously, we're short on, you know, we've only got a limited amount of time. And so I've picked one, plan and profile, because I think it gives us uh, kind of shows us the breadth of tools that are available to us. So we'll go through a plan and profile sheet layout. First thing we'll do is cover the basics, um, just in case you don't know how the process works. We'll go through that. Then we'll come back and look at dynamic annotation. Uh, we'll look at modifying name boundaries. And then finally, we will look at federated workflows. Once we've done the plan and profile, we'll move over to a cross-section sheet layout. And very similarly, we'll cover the basics just to show you how the process works in general. We'll come back and show you how to add single cross sections. Finally, we'll look at annotation and then federated workflows. Now, there are going to be three tools that we're going to use uh, basically for doing all of this. The first one that will, and the most, uh, the most primary or most important tool that will be used is the place name boundary tool. Uh, this will be using, uh, used for placing all of our name boundaries or what you may know as clipboarders, um, uh, to use another term. Uh, this will be used for plan, for profile, for cross sections, for single cross sections, whatever the case may be. So we'll get very familiar with this tool by the end of the presentation. Uh, a second tool that we'll use is the Name Boundary Manager. Um, this is, uh, uh, once we've placed our name boundaries, this is a place where we can go back and recut our sheets. We can delete name boundaries individually. We can delete entire groups. Uh, it's just a place that we can manage and see what we've got available to us. And then the third tool, and this is only used in the case where you've got profile name boundaries, is the Adjust Profile Name Boundary tool. And it does exactly what its name says. It allows you to modify or adjust your profile name boundaries and we'll take a look at this as well. So let's uh, begin with the first part of our agenda, the plan and profile sheet layout. And as I said, the first thing we want to do is just to look at the basics. 
So we'll begin in Open Roads Designer uh, Connect Edition Update 2. Uh, you can see here I'm in a blank file. I've created a file called Route 97 uh, Plan Pro Sheet. So I want to put my sheets uh, in, in my name boundaries in their own file. I don't want them in my corridors. I don't want them in my geometry. So I've created a blank file and I'm going to reference in all of my information that I'll need. So in my case I'm going to reference the corridor, I'm going to reference the geometry, and of course I'm going to reference the uh, terrain. So we'll just do a quick fit and we can see that all of that is, is placed in there as we would um, expect. Now we're ready to start cutting our sheets. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Drawing Production tab and access the Place Name Boundary tool. Now you'll notice at the top there's several icons. As I mentioned, this tool is used for profile, for cross sections, for plan. In my case, I'm going to select the plan. Now I've got three seed files in our workspace. I've got a plan only, I've got a double plan, and then I've got plan and profile. And so I'm going to select the plan profile, which of course is the plan portion of that. Uh, we'll come back later and look at our, uh, our scale. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select my alignment. And you can see as I dynamically move, it, it now it knows the alignment that I want to use. So my stationing is there. Uh, I can place them dynamically. I can key in a start-stop station if I want to, as, as you've seen there. So I'm going to come in and ask for a name. This is the name of the individual name boundary. So I'm going to give them Route 97 Plan 1. So they'll be called Plan 1, Plan 2, etc. And it also asks for a group name. So it'll put all of those under a single group. Now I'm going to place four sheets here. You can see I've got a 500 scale, so as I dynamically move, they will show me how they're going to be placed. Now this is really nice. If you want to use a different scale, you can just change the scale. So here I did 1 to 250. Here I'm going to do 1 to 100. What this shows us is you do not have to have different seed files for different scales. I can create one seed file and then just change the scale on the fly, which is a very nice uh, feature to have. So uh, again, I'm going to move in here and place about four name boundaries. Now notice at the bottom it says, do you want to create the drawing? Well, of course, right now, I don't want to create a drawing. I'm not ready yet. I haven't placed my profile name boundaries. So I'm going to toggle that off and just place the name boundaries, not try to create anything from them at this point. Now once that's been done, I want to open the profile view. And so I'm going to do that. Um, just open the profile view. Now notice, I want to point this out. Very important. I am in a blank file. Um, my geometry is in a reference file. But this is new technology with Open Roads Designer Connect Edition allows me to open the profile across reference files. And so that's exactly what I've done. That profile is, is actually a reference from the geometry. So I'm going to go back to my place name boundary. I'm going to select the profile. Uh, again, I've got multiple seed files here. Profile, profile, profile. You know, with what I'm doing, as I mentioned earlier, we want to do the profile. I'm going to leave my scale the same, of course. Um, I'm going to give it a name, uh, Route 97 Prof 1, so my name boundaries will be incremented. Notice under the method, I could do station limits. If I was just doing a profile only sheet, I might do that. But because I'm doing a plan, plan profile, I want, to, my, I want to use the same station values as my plan group. Okay, so I've got that all set up. I'm going to um, notice under Use Terrains and Use Active Vertical, that's going to be used to kind of position my sheets. Um, and I do want to use those so it can, can position them for me. And I'm going to toggle on the Create Drawing and the Show dialog. Uh, I'm going to put a data point in the profile window. You can see my sh uh, name boundaries are, are placed for me there. And once I've done that, the secondary dialog is going to open. Now this secondary dialog, it's got a lot of extraneous information, but a few things on there that you need to be aware of. Uh, you can see the annotation group is called out for the profile which you'll see here in just a minute. I can also add to sheet index. I can tell it I want to open the model when you're done. Uh, and now at this point I could say OK and I could kick off the production of my sheets and that's perfectly fine. I'm actually going to do it a different way just so I can introduce you to the name boundary manager tool. So I'm going to go open the name boundary manager tool and you'll notice it shows me my plan groups 
and my profile groups that I just created. So if I expand under the uh, under the plan groups, you can see I can see not only the group, I can see all the individual um, name boundaries. I can turn them off individually. I can turn them off uh, as a collective. Um, same thing with the profile. I can see the different things there. Now from here, I can right click. I can delete the group. I could go down and, and delete individual name boundaries. I can create drawings uh, from here. Um, so I've got some right click options that are going to allow me to, uh, to to kick off my sheets. Notice there's a toggle up top for show the um, secondary dialog and um, and annotate the plan. Um, in this case we don't have any plan to annotate so I'm just going to say uh, I can really all I really care about is whether or not I want to show the secondary dialog. Now in this case I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave that toggle off. I'm going to right click and say create plan and profile drawings. So it's just going to go, you can see in the lower right hand corner, that's being processed um, and my sheets are being created. Uh, once that's done, it's going to open up my sheet, my, you know, my, my plan and profile sh fourth sheet. Now let me show you how this works. So if you look at your models, you'll notice several things. Notice the first one, you've got some called plan views. Um, if I go to this, each name boundary is placed into its own drawing model. So for example, plan 1 is placed into a drawing model. Plan 2 would be placed into its own drawing model. In the same way, the profiles, if I scroll down, you'll see profile 1 is placed into its own drawing model. And you'll notice here that it's automatically been annotated. So we've drawn the grid, we've put in strip grades. Now you from here you can remove this annotation just by saying remove model annotation. I can all of it will go off. Um, if I want to re-annotate that model I can just say annotate the model and just say OK. It recognizes the annotation group and say OK and I can re-annotate the model. So the thing I wanted to point out here is all the annotation is done here in these drawing models. Now if I go to the sheet models you can see that those individual drawing models have been referenced in. So if I go to the uh, reference file dialog you can see there's plan 1 which has been referenced into the sheet model and there's plan 2 which has been referenced into the sheet model. And these are reference files so they can be moved, they can be anything you could do to a, a reference file like clip mask or whatever the case may be. Um, could be done here um, as well. So that's how the process works. Each name boundary is placed into its own um, individual drawing model. The drawing models are referenced to the sheet models to create our individual sheets. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.